Hello, welcome to another video of our channel. Here we translate testimonies of people who have gone through near-death experiences. Today we will know the story of Ashley, she tells that she died and visited an amazing spiritual city. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe now. Turn on the notification bell to be notified with each new video. Now let's listen to Ashley's testimony. In 2005 we had moved to New Orleans, my husband had been transferred there by his company. And I was excited, because I had started singing along with a jazz band, we were already doing several presentations in bars and nightclubs. One day, I was at home and it started to get very windy, it looked like the house was going to be pulled out of the ground. My husband was at his work and I was rehearsing by myself. Suddenly I noticed that the tiles were being ripped off. I looked down the street and saw pieces of wood flying in a great whirlwind of dust and wind. I was scared, so I didn't leave the house. But the winds only increased in speed and intensity. Suddenly, the wood of the ceiling started to come loose, one of them fell and hit my head. After that, the house was almost completely torn down. I was passed out under the rubble. At some point I felt like I was floating. I could see much of the city destroyed by the force of the winds. The scene was bleak, but I was at peace. I thought I had died and that didn't scare me. I started to climb, pass through the clouds. Then I began to see that there was a big city, suspended in the air. It was very beautiful. As I approached I could see a big golden gate. There was a glow that enveloped the entire city. The gates were open. You could feel the peace and love that emanated together with the light that came from there. I walked in and was amazed at what I saw. It was a huge city, very clean and organized. It looked like a city of the earth, it was like it was material. But it looked like something futuristic, the design of the city, the buildings, the houses, was different. There was a kind of transparent pyramid in the center and most of the buildings around it were round, or geodesic. When I entered, I was greeted by three people, two women and a man. Everyone was dressed in white and very friendly. They asked if I was okay. I replied yes, I had never felt so good. Somehow they knew what had happened to me. Then one of the women said, don't worry, you'll come back and together with your husband you'll rebuild everything you've lost. I wanted to stay in that place, it all seemed so wonderful. They invited me to walk around the city a bit. It looked like a megalopolis, but everything was very organized. There were people everywhere, it was a very populous city. The buildings were tall and there was a connection between them, by walkways that crossed the streets, above our heads. In some parts of the city there were landing posts. I was able to witness the arrival and departure of air vehicles. Many people came and went. That took me by surprise. I knew I was there in spirit, so I didn't understand the need for transportation. They explained to me that the spiritual body is like the material, but its density is less. And they also said that we can't handle some trips if we're not inside a vehicle. I realized that there is a spiritual technology. And that on that plane of existence, things are very similar to what we know on Earth. Maybe that's an in-between place. They said that many of the residents of that place were being sent to and around my city. For there had been a great storm that caused many deaths. So they were rescuing the souls of these people. They took me to see a recovery center for newly arrived souls. It was like a big hospital. I saw one of the vehicles disembarking with dozens of people looking as if they had suffered serious injuries. With them came many other people, those dressed in white, I believe they are the residents of the city. Inside the hospital there were hundreds of beds with people being treated. I realized that there were different roles among the city's residents. Some looked like doctors, others nurses. 
and others who looked like volunteers who were there to talk and comfort. The three people who received me were accompanying me on this visit. They explained that those people would be treated according to the severity of the trauma they had suffered. And that all of them, within a not too long period of time, would be fine, like all the residents of the city. I was impressed by it all. I asked if I could stay to help. That all moved me a lot. They told me they needed my help on land. I was told that I would come back and would not have major injuries. In a few days I would be ready to start my life over. They said that the city would need to join efforts to help those most in need. Many families had lost everything, including the people who supported their homes. So all help would be needed. The charity and love energy of that place was contagious. I was very happy to know that I could help in some way. After that they said I should come back. They led me to one of the vehicles that headed for land. Arriving there, I was taken to the rubble of my house. My husband was already there, with a group of volunteer firefighters, looking for my body. I was then pulled into my subject. When I regained consciousness, I started screaming loudly for them to find me. I was pulled out from under the wreckage of the house. They took me to a makeshift hospital, where I received first aid. Soon I was feeling better and already volunteered to help shelter the survivors. I came back with the certainty that the purpose of my life is charity. I also joined a bereavement counseling volunteer group. I was able to see what's on the other side and it made me much more relaxed to talk about life and death. We had a lot of work to rebuild our lives and help rebuild a destroyed city. But we count on the help of many people who also live connected with the powerful energy of charity. I'm sure spiritual workers are always following in our footsteps and sending their emissaries. So, what did you think of this testimony? Leave your impressions in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's bring more people the hope that there is life beyond what the eyes can see.